Let's go through the lineup here then. Poland always have a strong hand, and this is a new or rising talent for them. In the outside lane, Maciusz Borkowski, fourth in the European under 23s last year, second in this year's Polish Championship. Then we have Czuka, the Bosnian and Herzegovina record holder at 1.42.51. Well, he's had three seconds slower than that this year, but here he is bidding for another final. Fourth in 2016, sixth in 2014, so looking for his third final. Daniel Roden, an up-and-coming young star, the 20-year-old from Britain, who was the European under-23 silver medalist last year. And uh, he's been second in the UK championships. Well, as I said, he was second in the European under-23s, and the man who beat him just was this man, Andreas Kramer, the Swede, who's recently improved the Swedish record to 1.4503, very recently in Karlstadt. Long regarded as an outstanding prospect, an outstanding talent. Solo Donjes then, the fastest man in the field. Second in the European under-23s two years ago. Only second in this year's Spanish championship, but he is now their record holder. 143.65. Guy Learmonth competed for Scotland in the Commonwealth Games and was third in this year's British championships. Broke 145 recently for the first time. Yevgen Hutsol for Ukraine, twice the champion at that event. Moved up successfully from 400 meters. And a former medalist in the European Championships back in 2012. He won the silver medal. This is Andreas Buba of Denmark. And he at 31 is the oldest in the field. Roden of Britain in lane six at 20, the youngest. First three to go through to the final. That's uh, tomorrow. Olonius. Good 1500 meter runner as well. So it's Buba, Hutso, Learmonth, Olonius, Kramer, Roden, Tuka. Borkowski, how will it be run tactically? Learmonth likes to be near the present head of the field and he's certainly doing just that. Um, but there's not much to choose between them. Just one man hanging back at the moment and that's the fastest. No, I don't need to take it. Now though, there's a decisive move perhaps into making sure this is run as a reasonably quick pace as they go around the bend but really the whole field are pretty much together but it's Kramer who leads from Ordonez then making up ground fast is Buba on the outside and the Roden just trying to hold his ground in uh, third place there but uh, Buba now moving into third 52.03 so not especially quick but it's Kramer who's pushing on in front. Kramer from Odonez. Buber also biding his time. He's got a good finish. Odonez is still settling in in second behind Kramer. But really the whole field very much together. Tuka now coming from the outside. We've seen good finishes from him before. Kramer though now challenged by Buba. The two Scandinavians going away from Ordonez at the moment. Learmonth just behind them. Then Roden, the two British athletes in fourth and fifth. Coming up into the uh, home straight now. It is Kramer pushing on from Buba. Kramer looks good. Kramer looks strong. Ordonez looks as if he's going to get that third spot. Or is there a strong finish in the outside from the pole? Borkowski and Borkowski takes third place and Ordonez has to wait and see but it was a Scandinavian dominated race there and a fine run by Kramer and he came in ahead of the Dane Buba and then that finish from Borkowski rather reminiscent of his Polish compatriot shot who we will be seeing uh, to make sure that he got his third place in the final Ordonez though 146.82 in fourth. He will have to wait to see if that's quick enough. And Ordonez looked very tired in there coming down the home straight. I did cross my mind that this may be one race too far for Ordonez. Of course, he still has a chance of going through to the final.
but looking at the way he, he just went backwards and backwards as the rest attacked with Kramer romping away with this race I, I just wonder whether he left his best racing on the international circuit at the Diamond League meetings had to settle even for second in the French Championships this is a man who finished third in both the Polish 800 and 1500 metres recently 2017 World Championship semi-finalists at both distances as well Michel Rojmaz Thomas Roth recently ran a personal best of 145.75 at the Oslo Diamond League meeting seven times Norwegian champion over this distance and a man whose credentials we've talked about quite a lot the reigning world champion from France Pierre Ambrose Boss eighth in the 2014 World European Championships Two thousand and sixteen European bronze medalist uh, Elliot Giles came through and surprised everybody with that performance. Now this is the man who is many people's favourites to get his third successive European eight hundred metres title. Adam Schott, twice a world championship silver medalist as well, three times a European indoor champion. One of two Spaniards in this semi-final. Alvaro de Riba reduced his personal best to 144.99 when winning the Spanish title recently. This man ran well in his first round. Lucas Hodbod, 22 years of age. He's the youngest man in this field. And on the inside, the second of the Spaniards in this race. Daniel Anduja, third in the Spanish Championships. Indeed. Seems to have the ability to actually get up there and contest races. Doesn't win very many. Was fourth at the Europeans under 20 Championships back in 2013. So, which Adam Kashop shop shall we see? The one that takes it from the front or the one that darts to the front from 150 metres out? Looks like well. the latter. <laughs> well, it looks like the two Spaniards trying to make the way. Coming around from the outside, it's Rosmish. On the inside, though, it's Anduka. And now it's Pierre Ambrose Boss, a man who's also noted for hanging back and coming through with a late finish, but deciding to take up the running here. So Boss are in front. Anduka. Roth in third place at the moment. And on the inside, Hodbod, who had a... Very quick finish in his heat, and right at the back, it's Adam Schott, just watching everything unfold in front of him. Well, Boss goes through, 52.94 for the first lap, followed by Hodbod, Anduka, Roth, and Hodbod. So it's still Boss at the front, leading it all the way. Well, maybe he's wondering whether he does have a sharper finish. Just making sure. He's certainly got great talent as both. Ran 142.53 back in 2014. And now with 150 metres to go. It's Adam Schott working his way through the field. But also cranking it up at the front is Pierre Ambrose Boss. Boss now hitting the home straight in front. Schott trying to claw back the deficit and doing it very successfully. Getting right up on the shoulder of Boss. And now they're flying down the home straight. And... Looks like it might well be a second pole joining them in the final. Well, it was Schott who certainly took that semi-final. Rosmish gets second place with that well, yeah, phenomenal I was say, Boss run. eased off a little bit and he doesn't seem aware at all of the fact that there might be a man coming up on him. And just on the line, 
Well, Rosmish came from a long, long way back as well. Well, there's three to go through. I think Boss, as you rightly say, did ease up, thinking he was comfortable in second. Also closing down, but having a lot of work to do was Diariba. And Diariba there, faster than the previous heat with his 146.43, and also faster than the previous heat. Hopped up. Well, Hotbod has had a good championships. I think <laughs> I don't think he. I think he would be very happy if someone had told him he was a finalist before now. Well, this is at around the 200 meters to go mark, where we saw shot starting to accelerate, starting to come through from the back. Now he gets up on the shoulder of Boss with about 40 metres to go. Just the easiest past him. And just watch that long surge for the line from Rosmish. Well, Boss did certainly ease up.